from the deep seas of time and the great cosmos of ancient Norse mythology, emerges Frigg, the sovereign queen of Asgard, the pantheon of the gods. Her stature is as imposing as the stars and as enduring as the foundations of Yggdrasil, the world tree that supports the nine realms of the universe. Frigg is the towering goddess of marriage, fertility, and motherhood, and her presence is as deep and powerful as the eternal heartbeat of the cosmos. Her eyes, clear as the sky, see through time, space, and the souls of men and gods alike, foretelling destinies and shaping the course of the universe. Wife of the almighty Odin, she is the only one who can share his throne, the Hilids Jaff, from where the nine realms can be observed. Together they form a divine duo, imposing justice and balance through their wisdom, courage, and power. Frigg's palace, Fenseler, is a place of refuge and peace, a realm of still and silent waters. Here, the goddess spins destiny, weaving the future and past threads into a tapestry of the present. With distaff in hand, she spins the threads of destiny, each strand a life, each turn a choice. Her threads are woven into the very fabric of the universe, her patterns influencing the lives and destinies of gods and men. Frigg is the weaver of time, an artist whose canvas is the entire universe. From her throne in Asgard to the hearts of men in Midgard, Frigg's influence is omnipresent, her presence subtle but undeniable. She is a goddess of love, loss, wisdom, and destiny, a mother figure who nurtures, protects, and guides mankind and the universe as a whole. In every whisper of the wind and every star in the sky, the presence of divinity can be felt, as eternal and unchanging as the cosmos itself. Odin, the lord of Asgard, and Frigg, the goddess of wisdom and marriage, share one of the most complex and profound relationships in Norse mythology. The king of the gods, known for his thirst for knowledge and wisdom, crossed the boundaries of time and space in his quest. However, despite his vast wisdom, he always valued the counsel of his wife, Frigg, whose insight and wisdom rivaled his own. The two were companions in all respects. Despite Odin's infamous penchant for wandering, he always returned to his beloved. She, for her part, was no mere passive spectator to her husband's travels. Frigg possessed his influence and skills, and his knowledge often equaled or even surpassed Odin's. In many respects, their relationship was one of equality. One day, Odin set out on a journey to explore the far reaches of the Nine Realms. Time passed and the great god did not return. The hearts of the Asir, the gods of Asgard, began to fill with fear and anguish. They feared that Odin, their leader, their guide, would never return. In the gods' absence, his brothers, Vili and V, took on the responsibility of leading the Asir. Among their duties was the distribution of the possessions of the king of the gods. Everything seemed to go in relative harmony. They divided all their brothers' possessions between them. However, they reached a point where they could not agree because they did not know what to do with the beautiful queen of the gods. Frigg was much more than a wife to Odin. She was his companion, his confidant, his equal. The gods' brothers looked upon her with admiration, and while they understood the importance of their union, they also realized the need for her presence and guidance in this time of uncertainty. They decided to share her company, her wisdom, and her guidance. But it was not long before the unexpected happened. Without warning, the gates of Asgard opened with a roar, announcing the arrival of someone. The gods rushed to the entrance and saw a sight that filled them with joy. Odin mounted on his eight-legged horse, Sleipnir, had returned. With his one flashing eye, he gazed at the scene before him. His brothers had divided his possessions, even Frigg. But Odin, the father of all, was not driven by anger. Instead, he recognized the difficulty of his prolonged absence and the burden of leading the Asir. He peacefully regained his possessions and resumed his place as leader, and more importantly, as husband to his beloved. In time the gods sired three powerful sons, Balder, the god of light, beauty, and goodness, Hodder, the blind god, and Hermeter, messenger god. Balder, the son of Frigg and Odin, was known to be the god of light, joy, and purity. He was the most beautiful and beloved of the Norse gods. His kindly character and his brilliant appearance were so resplendent that they radiated light in the darkness. 
However, the happiness that enveloped his existence was interrupted by a series of disturbing dreams. Balder began to have terrifying nightmares that foreshadowed his death. Worried, he shared these dreams with the other gods. The Asser was deeply disturbed by these dire dreams, for the god was beloved by all and the possibility of losing him filled them with indescribable fear. Frigg, Balder's mother, and goddess of wisdom and foresight, decided to take measures to protect her precious son. With the determination of a mother who will not let any evil befall her child, the goddess traveled throughout the cosmos, drawing oaths from all things that exist. Animals and plants, metals and stones, diseases and poisons, even the elements themselves, fire, water, air, and earth, all swore not to harm Bald. However, in its wide-ranging journey, the divinity overlooked a seemingly insignificant being, the mistletoe. The mistletoe, being young and fragile, did not seem a threat to the mighty goddess, and thus she was not asked to take the oath. Loki, the god of cunning and deception, always on the lookout for an opportunity to sow chaos, discovered this one omission. Known for his ingenuity and his ability to shapeshift, he hatched a plan to discover the god's weaknesses. But to carry out his cunning plan, Loki decided to adopt a different appearance. He transformed himself into an old woman, a weary traveler seeking refuge. The goddess of wisdom, she was known for her hospitality and kindness. However, upon seeing the supposed traveler, a sense of mistrust came over her. There was something in that look, something in that smile that was too familiar, too sly. The traveler began to ask questions, wanting to know more about the gods that inhabited Asgard. Each question seemed innocent, and Frigg, not doubting the little old lady, told her all about the gods, including the story of her beloved son. When the goddess said that she had asked all things in the world to protect and swear to save her son except for the mistletoe plant, Loki let out a smile of victory and hurriedly left the place to continue with his evil plan. Thus, the god of deception created a mistletoe arrow and handed it to Hodder, Balda's blind brother, during a game in which all the gods, confident in the oaths obtained by Frigg, threw weapons at the supposedly immune god only to see them bounce harmlessly. Guided by Loki, Hodder launched the mistletoe arrow toward Bald. With no oath to protect him from this object, the divinity was mortally wounded, falling dead instantly. Joy and light vanished from Asgard, and laughter turned to wailing. Thus, Frigg's single omission in her attempt to protect her son led to the greatest of tragedies. Devastated by the loss of her son, the goddess is not resigned and decides to try to retrieve him from the realm of the dead, ruled by the goddess Hel. She sends Hermiter, another of Odin's sons, to the confines of the Nine Worlds, to Hel's dark abode, to negotiate Balder's release. Hel, being the goddess of the dead, agrees to release Balder, but sets one condition, that all things, living or dead, weep for the god, thus demonstrating his universal beloved. If a single thing refuses to weep, it will remain in the underworld. Frigg again travels the world, this time asking all things to weep for Bald. And they all do, demonstrating the love they felt for the god of light. However, Loki, disguised as the giant Thok, flatly refuses to weep for the unfortunate one. Thus, despite all of Frigg's efforts, Bald cannot be released from the abode of the dead until after Ragnarok, the end and rebirth of the world. Balder's death is a foreshadowing of this cataclysmic event and shows how even the gods are subject to fate and the cycle of life and death.